Hey again, and welcome to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to look at def var, def parameter, and def constant. Now all of these three are used for defining what are known as global variables. But the reason I want to avoid that term for the most part is that it has a slightly different meaning in common Lisp that it might do in other languages. Again, these are variables that are available globally everywhere, um, but what they're bound to is a little different. So see, these two up here, these declare what are known as dynamic variables, and this guy here defines constant variables. We'll start from the bottom and work up. We'll see what is going on there. Well, first off, we can see that we have these little symbols outside the names. So this is Baz and Bar and Foo, but we've got um, these extra parts of the name. We call these earmuffs. Um, these are little indications. They're part of the names. So the real name is plus Baz plus, but we just say Baz, the constant uh, var Baz. These earmuffs are to indicate to other programmers, and also obviously to ourselves in the future, um, that there is something special uh, about this variable, something different from a normal local variable. In this case, we're saying it's constant. It's just a, an indication to people like, oh yeah, this is a constant one. Shouldn't set that or shouldn't try and rebind, whatever. That's taken. Um, so let's see what happens. I can compile that, and I can compile it as many times as I like, and everything is fine. Uh, but if I try and change the value, it's going to freak out and tell me, hey, look, Baz is a constant, but you're trying to redefine it from 30 to 20, so that's no good. Um, let's get rid of this. Let's clear this screen and undo that. So again, we can't change the value of a constant once it has been defined. This also goes, of course, for setting it using setf or one of the other setting uh, forms. We'll get to those in another video. The important thing here, of course, is the fact it's constant. And the, the, inf the reason it's important is that the compiler can then maybe inline this value somewhere else. It might use it to uh, do some inference and decide something in your code somewhere else. It's very important that these can't get changed. And that's enforced by Lisp, and that's fine. And again, we use these pluses to indicate that, yeah, it's part of the name. This is constant. These two define dynamic variables. And for the first part, they're going to look exactly like global variables as you know them in other languages. Um, if we evaluate foo, it's 10. If we evaluate bar, we're going to see it's minus 20. Um, so what are the differences? And why we've got two of these things? The first one becomes clear when we uh, try and change the values. Let's make this one negative and this one positive. Right, we evaluate these. Nothing goes wrong. But if we look at foo, it's still 10, not minus 10. Um, and bar, oh, well, bar is actually 20, not minus 20 anymore. So here's a difference, the difference between def var and def parameter. You can, uh, when you have def var, recompiling this form will not update uh, the value bound to foo. If it's already bound to something, that won't change by recompiling. Def parameter will change from recompilation. So we can change this to whatever. We can say this is 10. We can say it's that, oh, not like that. We can say it's 1,000. All fine. Um, we can set it back to 20, but foo, whoops, foo is still 10. Now, this isn't to say it's immutable. Of course, we can use setf, and we can set our foo to be minus 10, no problem. And then if we look at foo, we can see foo is now minus 10. And we'll set it back to 10. So again, both global, both mutable. Um, but one allows a change by recompilation, and one doesn't. Now, it's not immediately obvious where this would be useful, but trust me, you will find a point in your code where you prefer one to the other in certain situations, the other in other cases, and you go, oh, that's why there's two. So this one that just kind of gets borne out with experience. Both are useful, both have their place. The important bit about these, and where they're both the same, is um, their dynamic nature. So this is the bit that's going to vary from a lot of languages you might have used. There are a couple that, um, no, there, no, there are a few with dynamic variables, but it's kind of rare. So we're going to see it at first. We're going to make a function called test, and we're going to do something very simple. We're going to print bar again. Foo is going to behave exactly the same in this regard. We run test. It says 20, which is what we expect. Brilliant. We can set it to uh, minus 20. Run it again. It's minus 20. That's great. 20. All right. I'm going to clear this again. We're going to make a little change. Now we're going to define another function. Test one. This one's going to print bar. And we're going to call test1 from test. So let's go down here. And we know exactly what will happen, right? We do test, and we get 20. And we can call test1 directly, and we get 22. Now we're going to do a couple of weird things. First, we're going to go down here, and we're going to say let uh, bar oops, 
gives me minus 1000, right? And compile this. And you might be thinking, okay, so when I run test one, now it's minus 1000. That kind of makes sense. We've declared a local variable called bar here, and that's being used. That's not actually the case. There is something going on deeper. And to make it clear what's going on, I'm going to take this. I'm going to recompile test one. So now it's just back to being print. I'm going to put it in test. And now we're going to run test one. And we'll see it says 20, which is the value of bar. But now we run test and it's minus a thousand. So what's happened? This um, special variable or dynamic variable, more correctly, special is the kind of um, older term. This dynamic variable bar has been dynamically rebound to minus a thousand and anything within the dynamic scope that is called um, say with basically within this let form or called within this let form is going to see bar be bound to minus a thousand bit weird huh let's do this now actually let's make it more pronounced i'm going to clear this on the right I'm going to call test one. We're going to see bar is 20 as we'd expect. And then we do test and it's going to print two things. The first time it's calls test one, it prints bar and it's minus a thousand. And next time it's the string high. This has been dynamically rebound a couple of times. And so this is very important. This is why I say that you shouldn't think of them just as globals. Um, there's actually some definitions that help this. And when you're in the spec, they talk about um, extent and or what's it called scope and extent and uh, these more precisely defined things but because they're technical terms and little fiddly and i want to get them right i'm going to do them in a separate video and so for now we just have to know that just don't think of them just as globals think of them as dynamic variables and that they can be rebound now this is kind of like if every function had an additional argument and this was just passed down with it so everything down in the stack from you um, gets past the value of bar um, it's kind of useful occasionally for like an implicit context or maybe some kind of concept of bindings. Um, but it's one of these things that it's powerful, but it should be used carefully because it's quite hard to reason about your code when this is in effect. And this is also why we use these little earmuffs, why we add these silly parts to the name, because then when someone sees bar here, they don't just look here and say, oh, it's always going to be 20. They say, okay, this has some special semantics. Now, once again, I want to indicate this is a... Thing you do to help other programmers. The asterisks are not mandatory, neither are the pluses, um, but it's communication. So to truly understand this, you have to know everywhere that test one can be called from, because maybe some of them rebind bar. Um, so normally we would prefer to write a pure function, one that can that its result is only dependent on the arguments that passed it. But this is an interesting case. You're going to see it in code, so it's worth knowing. All right, so we've had a quick look at def var, def parameter, and def constant, um, which constitute our globals in common Lisp, and we've seen uh, some a little bit of their behavior. I'm sure we'll dive deeper into dynamic stuff, dynamic variables, in um, another video. Please leave comments below. If you've got more questions, yell them out, and we'll try and get videos that cover uh, what you need. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.